Well, Brecon Beacon, um, it is one of the prime areas, probably the prime area for British infantry training. And in particular, this is where you are training uh, your young uh, infantry commanders. Uh, the platoon commanders, generally a lieutenant, possibly even a captain, fresh out of military academy, being with a regiment or battalion a year or two. But it's also very important for the key people who will take the soldiers into the fight and fight with them, platoon sergeants and corporals. And so there's a lot of stress, a lot of stress is put on them. And in this area, of course, there's a lot of uh, live firing goes on. And unfortunately, in the UK now, and for British forces, the areas for that are becoming pretty constricted. But very quickly, to go back to your heat stress thing, this is not entirely unknown. It happens from time to time. And when you get freak weather conditions, and it was very, very hot yesterday, today, these things can and do happen. We, we should say, Robert, this is a report from the Press Association quoting an MOD source, so not confirmed yet. But just from your experience, just how arduous are the exercises that soldiers would be taking part in in this area? Yeah, no, I don't want to give uh, any hostages to fortune with the health and safety uh, people. They are pretty careful about it. But one of these things is, you know, uh, working with troops uh, on, on fully on operations in Saudi Arabia in 91, um, in Iraq and in Afghanistan, you do have to be very, very careful, even with seemingly fit young men and women, about things like dehydration and uh, salt and what's going on in the body, because the body goes down very, very quickly. And part of the thing... Uh, particularly with elite units, they are trained there like special forces, paras, uh, 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 and so on. They do test themselves, and you have to be very, very careful when the temperatures are shooting up like that. It's somebody who can seem extraordinarily fit and then just sort of collapses in, 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 in a moment. And it is not a time to rush to judgment until we have more details. I do understand as one would expect, that next of kin have been informed. Yes. We, lots of us, I suspect, Robert, have this image of the army, which is rather dated, of sergeant majors shouting uh, at recruits. But presumably it's a rather more sophisticated matter these days. There's a lot more, there's a lot, there's a lot more emphasis on lead, leading than driving. I agree with you there. I've seen uh, paratroops, and it's amazing the small sample that they actually take and they go into the army as uh, fully paid up, fully qualified private soldiers in places uh, uh, like, like the, the, the Catterick in, 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 in Yorkshire. But you see the care, the monitoring, the monitoring of instruction at every stage. For instance, in the parachute regiment some time ago, there was a complete change of culture in which very serious senior officers, who we know of today, people like, General Jackson, extremely well known, and General Rupert Smith, told their trainers, your job is to get as many people, these are really tough sergeant majors, and sergeant instructors, it's your job to get people through and not to show your machismo by failing more than any of your colleagues. And it is a very, very different thing. But the interesting thing is that they are intent on keeping standards up. And the sad other side of it is that the recruits coming into the forces are much, much less physically fit, capable and able than they were even 20, 30 years ago.